This is Concept E classes and today we will deal with the question and answers of chapter 14 Chemical Effects of Electric Current. So before we enter into the exercises, let us take a quick revision of what all we have studied in this chapter. First we saw what are good and poor conductors of electricity. Then we saw how liquids conduct electricity using a tester and using a magnetic uh, compass needle and all. Then we saw the different chemical effects of electric current and finally the chemical process of electroplating. Now let us enter into the exercises. Question number 1. Fill in the blanks. Most liquids that conduct electricity are solutions of dash, dash and dash. We saw many experiments where we tested the conductivity of liquids and generally we studied that those liquids that are solutions of acids, bases and salts conduct electricity. So the answer is acids, bases and salts. B. The passage of an electric current through a solution cause dash effects. What effects? Chemical effects. We know that the chemical changes can be observed when electric current passes through a liquid, not in solids. Now C. If you pass current through a copper sulphate solution, copper gets deposited on the plate connected to the dash terminal of the battery. We have done an activity where we uh, inserted two copper uh, rods inside a copper sulphate solution and there we saw that a copper sulphate solution it dissipated into copper ions and sulphate ions and those copper ions which are positive in charge they deposited on the negative terminal of the battery. Now D. The process of depositing a layer of any desired metal on another material by means of electricity is called as electroplating. Question number 2. When the free ends of a tester are dipped into a solution, the magnetic needle shows deflection. Can you explain the reason? So we have to explain why the magnetic needle showed deflection. So let us explain. We know that the electric current produces magnetic effect. We saw an example when we kept a compass needle nearby a current flowing wire. Even if the current is small, the deflection of the magnetic needle can be seen. So, if a solution is a good conductor of electricity, it conducts electric current. So, if the free ends of a tester are dipped in such a conducting solution, the circuit becomes complete. And only if the circuit is complete, there would be a flow of electricity. And due to the electric current, the magnetic needle will show deflection. Question number 3. Name three liquids which when tested in the manner shown in figure 14.9 may cause the magnetic needle to deflect. So we have already explained this experiment in the previous video of this chapter. If you have any doubt, please refer the corresponding slides in that video. So when will the magnetic needle deflect? Only when there is a presence of electric current. So we have to name three liquids that are good conductor of electricity. So the answer is lemon water, vinegar and tap water. Question number 4. The bulb does not glow in the setup shown in the figure. List the possible reasons and explain your answer. So we have to explain why the bulb does not glow in such an apparatus. We have a battery with a bulb and the testers are free and are dipped into a solution. Let's see the possible reasons. The first one is the liquid may be a bad conductor of electricity. If it is a bad conductor of electricity, the circuit is incomplete and if the circuit is incomplete, there would be no flow of electricity. Hence the bulb will not glow. Second reason is the electric current may be too weak to make the bulb glow. We have already studied this in the first video of this chapter. So we replace the bulb with an LED if the current is too weak. Then the third reason is either the battery or the bulb may be defective. And fourth reason is there may be a loose connection in the wires. Question number five. A tester is used to check the conduction of electricity through two liquids labeled A and B. It is found that the bulb of the tester glows brightly for liquid A while it glows very dimly for liquid B. So what can we conclude? So we are using a tester to check the conduction of two liquids labeled A and B. And uh, we found out that the bulb of the tester glows brightly for liquid A as compared to that of liquid B. So what can we conclude? The option says liquid A is better conductor than liquid B. Liquid B is a better conductor than liquid A. Both liquids are equally conducting and for this conducting properties of liquid cannot be compared in this manner. So what would be the answer? If the bulb grows brightly for liquid A, then the liquid A is a better conductor than liquid B, right? Because it, uh, the bulb uh, where we tested 
the conductivity of liquid B glows very dimly. It means that there is weak current there. Hence, we could conclude the answer as the liquid A is a better conductor than liquid B. Question number 6. Does pure water conduct electricity? If not, what can we do it to make it conducting? So, does pure water conduct electricity? No. Why? Because it doesn't contain any salts. It is a pure form. It is free of salts. So, what can be done to make it conducting? We could dissolve some common salt to the water. So, we already studied that when we add common salt uh, inside distilled water, it makes it a good conductor. Question number 7. In case of fire, before the fireman uses the water hoses, they shut off the main electrical supply for the area. Explain why do they do this? So, we have to explain why the firemen shut off the main electric supply before they use a water hoses. Let's see why. Why do they shut it off? Because to avoid electric shock as water is a good conductor of electricity. And if this water may come in contact with any type of electrical appliances, they conduct electricity and it might affect the firemen as well. As they are carrying the hose, the electricity from that appliance would harm the firemen and the people around them. So, in order to avoid this, the firemen, they shut off the main electrical supply before using the water hoses. Question number 8. A child staying in a coastal region tests the drinking water and also the sea water with his tester. He finds that the compass needle deflects more in the case of sea water and can you explain the reason? So, a child, he tested both the drinking water and the sea water with his tester and he find that the compass needle deflected more in the case of sea water. So, why did it happen? We have to explain it. So, let's see the answer. We know that the electric current, it produces magnetic effect. And sea water, it contains large amounts of salt. Hence, it is a better conductor of electricity than the drinking water. That is why the compass needle deflected more in the case of sea water. Question number 9. Is it safe for an electrician to carry out electrical repairs outdoor during heavy rain pour? Explain. Is it safe? No, it is not safe for an electrician to carry out electrical repairs during heavy rain as there is a high chance for the electrician to experience an electric shock as water is a good conductor of electricity. Question number 10. Pahili had heard that the rain water is as good as distilled water. So, she collected some rain water in a clean glass tumbler and tested it using a tester. To her surprise, she found that the compass needle showed deflection. What could be the reason? So, if rain water is a good as distilled water, then why did the compass needle show deflection? Let's see. As we know that rain water is the purest form of water. But as it reaches the earth, it gets mixed with many air pollutants like sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide, thereby making it acidic in nature. We have studied this in the conservation of plants and animals about acidic rain. So, the rainwater, which is the purest form, it before reaching it to the earth, it gets mixed with all these pollutants. Hence, it will become acidic in nature. So, we already know that acids are good conductors of electricity. Hence, if rainwater is tested using a tester, the combus needle will surely show deflection. Question number 11. Prepare a list of objects around you that are electroplated. What was the process of electroplating? It is a process of depositing a layer of any desired metal on another material by means of electricity. So, let's see some of the objects. We do chromium plating on uh, many objects such as car parts, bath taps, kitchen gas burners, utensils, bicycle, handlebar, wheel rims, etc. The jewelry platers, they make electroplate silver and gold on less expensive metals. Tin cans, used for storing food are made by electroplating tin onto iron. Similar is the case of door handles as well. Question number 12. The process that you saw in activity 14.7 is used for the purification of copper. A thin plate of pure copper and a thick road of impure copper are used as electrodes. Copper from impure road is sought to be transferred to the thin copper plate. Which electrode should be attached to the positive terminal of the battery and why? So, in that activity, we saw that uh, we have two copper plates. It is a thick, uh, thick impure copper plate and a thin pure copper plate. And we uh, 
place the copper plate inside a copper sulfate solution. Then we connect these copper plates to the terminals of the battery and allow the current to pass through them. And we can see that uh, the copper from the impure road is sought to transfer to the thin copper plate. So we have to explain which electrode should be attached to the positive terminal of the battery and why. So the answer is when the electric current is passed through the copper sulfate solution, the copper sulfate it breaks down into copper and sulfate ions. Copper would be positive and sulfate would be negative. So the free copper ions which are positive in charge it gets attracted to the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the battery as opposite poles attract each other and it gets deposited on the negative electrode which is a cathode. Hence the thin copper plate should be attached to the negative terminal of the battery. So which copper plate should be attached to the positive then? The thick impure copper plate should be connected to the positive terminal of the battery as equal amount of copper gets dissolved in the solution. Thus the loss of copper from the solution is restored and the process continues. This means that the copper gets transferred from one electrode to another. So which electrode should be connected to the positive terminal? The thick impure copper plate should be connected to the positive terminal. So that's all for the question and answers of chapter 14. Tune in soon for the next session. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe if you find the contents useful. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care and bye-bye.